have any inventory. All these cars on the floor are customer cars who are thinking about selling. It's kind of crazy. And I think this one I sold is sold. Yep, that one's sold. Thought about black, but black was pretty common. But I did get the red seats. Got those red seats. Gotta have those red seats. Alright. So, I just ordered one of these. And if everything goes alright, I will have it by the spring. Got these wheels and it's yellow. So we will see. And I got the convertible. So it's interesting. It's intriguing. The things that you can do during the holidays. So this is more representative of what I'm getting. Just imagine this in yellow. So we got the red seats. Different kind of rims. And yes, we got that rag top. If everything goes well, I will be tooling around in this bad boy this spring. And we've got different kind of exhaust. It's like a performance exhaust. But we will see. <sighs> That's a fun car. Super fun. in the future i don't know what's going on guys it's just tuesday wednesday then thursday is thanksgiving and you know what i've been on youtube 13 years and i have been trying to do educational products and you know like i sent out an email to everyone in hustlers kung fu and b school for hustlers that there will be no training this week I, Glidden Cameron, have decided to embrace the holidays. I might even put a Christmas tree up there. Be looking out for that. That Christmas tree. I'm thinking about hanging some Christmas lights off the balcony. I'm just, I'm rolling with it. I am rolling with it. So today, I finally got my window fixed on my X5. And I really miss driving it. And I was driving it. And I had to go to Tent Word and Shamley. And for some reason, I found myself in the Porsche dealership. And I ordered a 2022 911 S Turbo drop top. And I can't wait. If everything goes according to plan, I should have it spring or early summer, which will be perfect for that car, which would be perfect. So one of the things I'm doing, like I, I got friends who got out of town last week and I'm just sitting here like, you know what? You got people who are broke, who got, who are suffering, who need to make money, but they're going to break. They're going to take Thanksgiving and they're going to enjoy Thanksgiving and they're going to forget about their worries and troubles for a few hours or a few days. And then they'll go back to that life next week. And like I said, I ain't messing with nobody. I am not even trying to push people like for years and years and years. I would try to be push people because when I was in the storage auction business, this was a busy, busy, busy time. You know, Christmas because you had to sell because Typically around the 20th, sales would just drop off a cliff. Unless you were selling on eBay. Because one of the biggest days on eBay was the day after Christmas. Because people would take their Christmas money and buy what they want. 
So I am just chilling this week. You know, uh, I got a training. Uh, I should put that link below. I believe it's Sunday, whatever day the 29th is. And it's a, it's a free training, so you don't have to pay anything to go there. I'll put that link below. And one of the things that I just decided to do was to roll with the punches. Currently, I have a 550, 535, and a 335, and another 550, and the Mercedes in the shop, kind of, sort of. Like the 550, the 535, and the uh, 335 are in the shop, and they can't get parts. So I'll get those cars back after Thanksgiving. The Mercedes. I don't know what happened to this guy. So the Mercedes is at Mercedes Benz and I should be getting a key for that car tomorrow. And once I get a key and get the tire fixed, and this, this is something else. Last week was really, really stressful and really expensive. To get the 740i back into running operation, it costs $5,000. Broken windshield between the toes and all the stuff, the damage that they did. And I am so glad this guy's going to prison. I am so glad this guy's going to prison. So I'm in the point where I have the 740, the 5, the X5, the Range Rover, and another 550. That's all I got left that I can rent. And I have a feeling that they're going to rent for the holidays. But um, one of my biggest problems, and this is something that I am sitting here thinking about is keeping my cars out of the hands of the worthless people. These are uh, worthless people, man. I mean, every time, and I had someone was talking about, you know, you, this isn't true about people. Every time I have someone who has rented a car from me that has lived in a hotel, it has ended up badly. So I don't know what you're talking about. And I got to think of a policy to keep my cars out of the hands of these people who are just destructive. Like the 740, that car was in mint condition and it's almost back to mint. It's got a dent and oh yeah, the air AC vent, BMW didn't have that. So that's on the wait list. So I got to wait till that comes back. But the windshield, the starter and all this other stuff has been put together. And I'm just sitting here looking at the worthless people. Because when we go back to the Range Rover and play a player, these people, the worthless people, have such a serious thirst to have something nice. And the thing is, when they get something nice, they cannot take care of it. They can't take care of it. I don't know what is up with these people. I've had my uh, red Porsche. Uh, I, I've had it a year. It's not a dent, there's not a scratch on it. I've had that car up to 155 miles per hour. And what I'm seeing is a strong correlation between filth, disorganization, poverty, and danger. This is the danger song. Because one of the new policies that I'm gonna implement that you know the car's gonna go out on a full tank of gas, it's gonna be clean, and it needs to come back that way because I've gotten cars back that were just filthy, just filthy. And once again, the worthless people, with the worthless people, I gotta keep my hands out, I gotta keep my cars out of the hands of these people because I was at the Porsche dealership and I was talking to it and the guy was saying that you cannot put this type of car in the hands of someone who's not used to it. Year, years and year, years ago, years and years and years ago, I lived in the West End and there was um, a girl who grandmother died and she got like $400,000 and she bought a new BMW. Within six months, the, B the bumper was hanging off of this car, six months. So there is a strong correlation between being clean and organized and being dirty, filthy and unorganized and poor. There's a strong correlation because I look at it because like, I think the guy, like the guy in the Mercedes, he could have died. That's a little dark, but the car was clean. And see, he was paying on time. 
So I have a feeling that something happened to him. Maybe he went to jail. I don't know. I don't know. But one of the things, oh yeah. Um, let's talk about the video. I could have been a predator. I have people who are leaving comments. Are you going to move to Dubai? I am shocked at the low intellect of these people. They're like doing all this other stuff. Like once again, I have now this guy, y'all, y'all know that I have filed eight police reports, right? Stolen cars long before I could have been a part of the video, right? And they don't ask you 911, how may we help you? They ask you, what is the address of the situation? I've called them eight times. And they will ask you, what is the address? And they will ask you to confirm the address and they will ask you to confirm your phone number. It is not like 911. And people are putting this stuff in the comments and I know they're lying. I know that they're lying. I don't feel, I know for a fact because I have called 911 eight times this year. And it's always the same thing. 911, what is the address? That's the first question they ask. And all of these people who are like reporting me I put this challenge. Go ahead, report me, and film the conversation with the FBI. I dare you, because it's going to be nothing. And a lot of these people feel that I should leave the internet. They're like, you should just do us, you do us a favor and kill yourself and all this other stuff. And I'm just sitting there like, these people are nuts. Not only are they broke and poor and stupid they're they're beyond dumb because i saw a comment and someone was like you know all of these people are saying all of these bad things about you and you just keep moving like you're unfazed because i'm like and i was put people saying bad things about me don't pay my bills these people who feel that they have all of this power because they're a collective mob. I'm just sitting there like, really? Every day, I have people buying my courses and products. Every day. And I'm just sitting there like, just keep doing what I'm doing. Because the robe-wearing bitch and the lead bitch, they are judgmental assholes who have not lived life. And this is one of the reasons, and I want to say a heartfelt thank you to the supporters of Glendon Cameron, because the lead bitch and the road wearing bitch, you ain't gonna learn shit from these guys. You're not gonna learn a damn thing from these guys. They're putting on a show. They're not trying to teach you shit. And I'm just sitting here like, it's kind of funny. I have so many people who are asking me questions like we boys. Oh, block. And this is something else too. When I go to block them and I see their YouTube channels, they're 99.9% of them are consuming mental junk food. No TED Talks, no stuff, no symphonies, just garbage. They're consuming garbage. So these people are already stupid and they're making themselves dumber. They're making themselves dumber. And they're, part of it is, because what's starting to happen is, first there was all of this hate and all this other stuff. Now it's turned to envy. Because there will be some of those clowns, it's like, oh, the pedal getting a Porsche. And then the, someone left this on my financial channel. Y'all taking financial advice from a pedo? And then someone hit him back like, this guy's information is solid. I, you know, you don't like him, that's your problem, but I'm gonna listen to him. And they hate that. And I'm gonna tell you why they hate that. Most of these people have no one in their lives that look up to them. And I went ahead and put that video up. And I have thousands of people who look up to me, who buy my products, who listen to what I say, who take my recommendations to a non-accomplished person who hasn't done shit in life. They're like, what the hell? 
So it is now starting to turn to envy. It, what was disgust and fake outrage is now turning to envy. And guys, when I get that new Porsche, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rub my balls all over the internet. Because, you know, as one person said, instead of trying to uh, cancel you, they should listen to you because you give good advice. But once again, uh, in my video talking about Spencer Cornelia, Spencer actually put in the video that he wasn't going to listen to Grant Cardone or Robert Kiyosaki, two individuals that are way more successful than Graham Stephan, Ryan Panea. You know, this is public proof that these guys are way more successful than Graham, but he's going to listen to Graham and Ryan because he feels that they could teach him more. Like, look, I understand Grant can be an asshole at times. Like one time Grant just did a video with five supercars posted up there. <laughs> you know, Grant was rubbing his balls over the internet. And one of the things that I've talked about in the video to be liked is you got to get past that. Cause like I've listened to Grant and Grant has helped me make more money. Grant has a $150 million online education business. Graham Stephan don't make that kind of money. Ryan Panea don't make that kind of money. And that's just one of his revenue streams. They ain't even including the real estate. They ain't even including the real estate. So a lot of people just look at Grant and instantly start hating because Grant is uber successful. Grant is not just merely successful. He is uber successful. He is tremendously successful. And these clowns, they just hate, they just hate. So what, what you're gonna see is now the, the disgust and stuff has turned to envy. And when I'm riding around in that brand new, and you know, this is the first time I bought a brand new car in a long time. Because typically I buy one to two years old, let someone else take the depreciation. But here's something that's really interesting. I was at Porsche today and I saw a 2018 911 S, which is the car that I have. I have a 2019. This car was going for $15,000 more than what I paid for my car, and it had 23,000 miles on it. My car only has 11,000 miles on it. So I could conceivably sell my car for 150 and make a $30,000 profit. So what I'm learning, and I've been looking, and this is one of the reasons I'm gonna drop, it's like um, 250 and it's taxes. It's gonna be like 267 once it's all said and done. And the reason I'm dropping this kind of bread on this car is if I take care of it 20 years from now, it will be worth more than it is today. I've seen this, I've studied this, I've studied this like, those 1997 um, 911 turbos, 930s, some of those cars are going for a million dollars. They only cost like 70,000 when they were new. And I'm going to get it. I'm going to put a ceramic coating on it. I'm gonna take care of it. And I'm just gonna hold on to it. So I'm buying this car as an investment. That's why, you know, cause uh, one of the chicks I'm dating, she was like, I just can't see spending that kind of money for a car. I was like, it's an investment, baby, it's an investment. She said, if you say so. So yeah, and uh, once again, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm embracing the holidays. And normally I'm a bah humbug type of guy with the holidays, but this year, like I said, I'm probably put some Christmas lights up on the balcony, get me a Christmas tree. I got some nice Thanksgiving plans. Yes, I have friends. I know. And you know what's funny? Only one of my friends knows about this stuff on the internet because most of my friends are wealthy, productive people, and they're not living on the internet consuming garbage content like the line share of the worthless people. And someone got mad at my video because I was saying that these people was like, oh, P.L.'s calling people worthless. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. From Glendon Cameron to you worthless people, you haven't accomplished shit in life. You're not building anything. You're not contributing to society. You're just sucking up oxygen. And here's something, a truth that you don't wanna hear. If you die tomorrow, 
No one will miss you. No one. Maybe your uncle, maybe your mama. That's about it. No one would miss you because you're not a contributor to society. You are a consumer and you are a heinous consumer. And what I mean by that is you just consume because see, many of you folks are on the edge of becoming criminals. Many of you, many of you because you're so broke. And the thing is being uneducated, that's not a sin. That's not a sin at all, but to Embrace being stupid and want to stay stupid. Now that's the sin. And there are many people. Jordan Peterson talks about this all the time. It's called a conscientiousness trait that is absent from this group of people. How do I know? I deal with the worthless people in my car rental business. They bring back the car on E. They bring it back dirty. French fries, chicken McNuggets. All kind. I'm just sitting there. How does a person live like this? I don't understand. How does a person live like this? And one of the things that I am seeing is that with the worthless people, they're looking for shortcuts. They're looking for an escape hatch versus buckling down. Because this is what the training is going to be about um, Sunday. I believe it's Sunday. You know, I, I'll, I'll, once I put it down there, you can join. You got to get your money straight. I used to be homeless. At one point in my life, I was a worthless person and I was unaware of it. Now, what do I mean by that? I had a job. I was raising a family. I went to work every day. I was a worthless person because I was just a consumer. I had my little job but I did not contribute to the greater good of society. I was a worthless person. And my finances reflected me being a worthless person. I didn't have any money. I was working three jobs, working seven days a week, and it was just paycheck to paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. And Earl Nightingale, much credit to Earl Nightingale, got me out of being a worthless person. Because see, when I say you're a worthless person, you're worth less. What is your worth in society? I had a heart attack and the internet. People were like, what's going on with Glenn? People were looking for me. See, as a worthless person, you disappear. Nobody's going to be looking for you. No one's going to care because you, you, you don't really do anything. And one of the things that I'm really beginning to see since I'm in close proximity with a lot of worthless people in the car rental business is a lack of consideration for the person who's gonna rent the car after them. That thought is absent from their mindsets because I had a girl, she rented the car, she had all kinds of issues. And I did not know the car was that filthy because like I said, I'm kind of on holiday. You know, I'm just like, I'm rolling with it. I'm like, these cars, I was like, I went and talked to them today. I'm gonna to get them back after Thanksgiving. That's cool. I am not gonna sweat it. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just going to, you know, shot my ass off as you can see i got some new gear uh, i'm in the process of going through my closet getting rid of anything that's old and ratty it's gone goodwill so i spent like 1500 bucks at the nike store and you know that's a tax deduction because i do youtube and it's considered wardrobe so i'm about to start spending some more money i'm going to enjoy the holidays i'm going to be in a good mood because as one commenter said, you know, I didn't really like that video, but I've been looking across your YouTube channels and that's the only video like that. There ain't nothing else that comes close to it. I was like, yeah, because it was a social media experiment. And Erica's fat ass was talking about it. it ain't no experiment. He did that. And Erica, Erica, had, Erica and I disagree on a lot of stuff because, um, I kind of saw some of her com commentary and I'm just sitting there like, hmm, because there's a lot of stuff that Erica gives you that ain't gonna work. I'm just gonna say it, it ain't gonna work. And if you wanna follow her, that's, that's your choice, but it ain't gonna work. And um, I'm beginning to see um, 
the greatness in me. Now, what do I mean by that? This isn't the first time that something like this has happened to me. It's not the second, it's not the third time. Every time something like this happens to me, it changes my energy and I move to a new level. Every time. So, Erica, the road wearing bitch, the lead attorney, they can't do what I can do. They can't do it. You wanna know why they can't do it? Because they've not lived my life. Everything that I give you to these guys comes from my life. It is 100% organic. I don't have to research. I can hold down not one, not two, not three, four YouTube channels by myself because I have lived that much. I have written books, I've created training courses, I've run multiple businesses. And the lead bitch and the road wearing bitch, they can't do that. So they're inadequate in that regard. And I, I, the more I think about it, the more I think that the, the road wearing bitch is just jealous because I'm gonna tell you a little story. During the Craigslist protocols, I was sleeping with a lot of married women. And one day I get this message, we need to talk. And I didn't recognize the number and I was like, who is this? And he said, her name, and he said, husband. He said, I know that you're fucking my wife and I wanna have a conversation about it man to man. I was like, all right, cool. So we go, we set a time in the day. And I, I take dude to a nice dinner, you know, cause he seems to be stable. He's not like, I'm gonna shoot you. Not like the guy who wanted to shoot me. And we sit down and we had a conversation and he's just like, what is it about you that makes my wife smile? Cause he noticed that his wife had changed and he knows he had nothing to do with it. And I began to tell him things about his wife that he did not know. And I was like, and I asked him a question. I was like, you want to stay married? And he said, yeah, I love her. I said, all right, this is what you do. And it, it just blew his head. And I was like, what do I do? It's like, when you go home, when she's in the kitchen, you just come behind her, turn her around, and slap her across her face. And he said, you're kidding. I said, no. He said, do it. And then after you slap her across her face, say, bitch, get on your knees and take your dick out and make her blow you and come in the kitchen. And he was like, is that what you do to her? I said, yes. And to his credit, he went home and he followed exactly, he did exactly what I told him to do. He turned around and he slapped her, and, you know, and he slapped her real hard. He slapped her real hard because he was pissed at her, right? And then he said, bitch, get on your knees. And he's like, he told me, he said, that's the best blowjob she's ever given me in life. And he said, we fucked like rabbits that night. See, I operate in a different space than the lead bitch and the road wearing bitch. They operate in Disneyland. I operate in the real world. And I give you real world solutions that will work because like this dude, he could not believe me because he, 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 next day he's like, oh my God, he's like, she loves this shit. And I was like, and I, I gave him the whole instructions and I met with him once a week. And then one night I met with him and her and she was surprised to see me. And I told her, I was like, I've been training your husband to dominate you. And this bitch got to her knees and kissed my hand. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, oh, thank you, oh, thank you. Because once he started dominating her, I stepped out the picture. Because she was getting what she wanted and he was getting his wife back. And he, he, he later on, he told me, he's like, you know, I was raised to never hit a woman. I was raised, and now I am seeing all that is bullshit. They actually got into swinging, all kinds of stuff. And, you know, for the mass population that wants to live in Disneyland, they don't understand what we do here. They don't understand me. They can't grasp it because they're mentally impotent. And for you guys who get it, 
for you guys who love the content, for you guys who love the training, let me just tell you, 2022 is going to be a watershed year. I am taking this time because even though I'm not training, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about what can I do? What can I put together? And how can I reset it up? And, you know, one of the things, and this is one of the reasons that my brand could take the hit from the I Could Have Been a Predator video. My brand is not a fucking Disneyland brand. I've never been Disneyland. As Erica's fat ass said, I've been telling these stories for years. And once again, I do what I wanna do. And this is why, for those of you who get it and who follow me, you understand that I live life on my terms. I do what I want. Cause Eric goes like, you don't have to do this. You could just run ads. I'm like, bitch, you know how much money I make by not running ads. See, I run, I hang out with some people who run ads and here's the thing. A lot of them run into problems running ads. When you start scaling, where you're spending hundred K a month, you can run into some problems if you don't do it correctly. And they're consistently shocked that I make just as much money as they do and I don't run ads. Uh, Alex Becker said something about, you know, traffic from a YouTube channel versus running ads. Running ads can be extremely powerful strategy if you dial it in. If you dial it in. If you dial it in. If you don't dial it in, you're gonna waste a lot of money. I'm talking a lot of money. This is why I know people who get paid a million dollars to create a YouTube ad and to run the traffic to it. They get paid a million bucks. And these guys are professional. They're the Harmon Brothers, Travis Chambers, Daryl Leaves. I actually know these people. I've sat and broke bread with these dudes. And I'm getting ready to tell you that, you know, just running like 3,000 bucks a month on ads. If you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna waste your money. And one of the things that you can consistently see, and if you don't believe me, I want you to go through your mind and notice the ads that you continue to see running. Because you'll see some ads and they will run for a hot minute and they will stop. You wanna know why they stop? Because they ain't making no money and they're losing money. But the ads that you consistently see, like Ty Lopez, he ran that ad for years because Ty was making a shitload of money. See, this is one of the reasons like in 2022, I'm gonna create stuff where I can run ads to because the way my stuff is set up, it, it's, it's a buildup. It's a getting to know Glendon Cameron, getting to know my content. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, like a, it's like a relationship. It's like a romance, you know? I gotta take you on a few dates, buy you a few steak dinners, and then you're like, all right, I get this. I get this, but once again, I am a 100% true businessman. And most of the folks on YouTube are not, they're just not. And I'm not saying this to say that they're stupid. I'm just saying that they don't have my level of expertise because once again, how many people could have withstood this debacle? There are people who are talking about, I should move to Dubai, I should leave the country. The FBI is coming to get me, I'm going to jail. And these are the uneducated people who think they know something, but they don't know something. Because like, once again, the legal system. I don't know if you guys remember this, but I said I've been to court like 23 times and my record in court is 21 and two. I won 21 cases, I lost two. I am very familiar with court and court proceedings and how they work. And also I'm really familiar with how people get arrested. And first thing that you have to do before you get arrested, there has to be actionable evidence in a crime. And all of these people who say, because I think a lot of them are lying, who are reporting me, what are they reporting? This guy made a YouTube video, no names, no date, no times, no places. We don't even know if it's true, but they feel that we're gonna get you. And I had people, uh, I saw the cancel Glendon Cameron hashtag. It was pretty funny. I don't know where that's gone because I haven't even looked. But guys, look at 
what I built, look at how I maneuver and look how I have weathered this. I am going out and buying a $270,000 car after that video. I have moved to, not the penthouse, because I ain't lying to you, like this is not a penthouse, it's a three bedroom, but it's not the penthouse, it's on the 14th floor. And I love it. I thoroughly love it. I just love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So you're gonna see new training, new content. If you notice, all of my videos are now produced by Mac Daddy Media. That's an LLC that I have. And I'm getting ready to put my foot into it. I'm getting ready to put my foot into it. Because like I said, the car rental business, at the moment, the only thing that's positive about this is this gonna get me a lot of my tax money back. That's the, the big win. Like when I file my taxes next year, I'm looking at getting a hundred, $120,000 refund. That's the big win. And that's how I'm gonna get my money back during the interim because once again, I don't understand why a person would live in a hotel and rent a Mercedes. I don't understand that. Makes no sense to me. Cause it's not something I would do. I don't even finance cars, let alone rent a fancy car like that to be in front of a hotel. I don't understand that. I just don't. So one of the things I gotta do is revamp my whole approval process and stuff because I keep running into these problems. Like this month I have made 15,000 but guess what? This month I have spent 17,000 fixing cars that renters have messed up. From this 5,000 for the 740 alone, for buying rims, for fixing stuff. I got another car back, the 550, bumpers hanging off of it. Now I know how to fix that pretty cheaply. So I'll fix that once, you know, once I'll get that probably back December. And I'm just sitting here like, how is it that I can drive multiple cars and not be running over stuff? Like, I can't remember the last time that I personally got a flat. I can't remember it. And these consistently, these worthless, careless people, they're worthless and they're careless and they're filthy and they're disorganized. This is a wicked combination for a lack of a successful life. These guys will never, ever be successful. Never, ever be successful. Because one of the things I'm gonna do in the training is we're gonna talk about things that you need to do to get your, your financial life in order. Because your financial life is pretty much just gonna mirror your physical life. So if your physical life is disorderly, unkept, dirty, filthy, whatever, more than likely that's what your financial life is gonna be. Because that's what I'm consistently seeing across the board. I'm consistently seeing people who are living these dumb, dirty lives, these crazy lives. So guys, one of the things I want to really bring to you during this, you know, I need to get me a Santa Claus hat. That's what I need to do. Cause I'm gonna continue to make videos and have these little conversations with you. But um, yeah, man, it's kind of, it's kind of cool that I'm in this spot because, you know, I've been talking to some folks and I've told some of my friends what happened and it's like, really? He said, why are these people freaking out? It ain't like you did it to their family member. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But once again, um, it's going to be, 2022 is going to be an amazing year for me. I can feel it in my bones. Like today, I was like, you know, like I said, I got the window finally fixed on the X5 because one of the things that happens, and this is a happen, this happen, this has happened to me a few times in life, where everything goes wrong. Like I had an appointment, the guy didn't call, he didn't show up. Then the next day, I go to their location, they don't have a glass. And finally they sell up an appointment and they gave me like $120 discount. So that that's worth something. And I've learned that when all of this chaos is going on, just smile, be happy and keep moving. Keep moving on.
just keep going forward because this is a period like I had anticipated that November was going to be a better month but I had these fools keep the seven because I'm fixing like uh, a lot of that 17,000 came from last month so this has been a better month in terms of you know I haven't had a lot of stuff go now like the Porsche let's say with the Porsche the guy ran over some and he flattened the tires he blew out the spare the spare which I have not bought is one thousand dollars and I'm just sitting here like you cannot put nice stuff in the hands of poor people you just can't do it you just can't do it so what one of the things I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to sell a lot of those cars a lot of the cars that have been problematic, I'm getting rid of them. So I'm gonna have a sale. I'm probably getting in trouble because I'm gonna like sell probably six or seven of them and just whittle the fleet down and because I can take a loss. I can sell these cars at a loss and take it off my taxes. And even though I will exhaust the refund for this year, I can carry those losses over to next year so my tax bill will be even smaller. So once again, we got a lot of stuff that's going on. I'm gonna be cooking with you guys and we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff. And yeah, man, I'm embracing the holidays with gusto. You know, I'm gonna do it up. Get me some lights out there, get me a Christmas tree, and just ho-ho it up, ho-ho it up. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you guys in the next one. There's uh, the training, the link to the training should be below. There's a free audio book. And yeah, I'm not doing any Black Friday sales. That's something else. I'm not doing anything for Black Friday, nothing. Uh, I'm just going to uh, introduce some other stuff and I'm going to get that rolling because I got to get into the masculine frame training, which my goal is to work on that tomorrow. So I got people waiting for that. So once again, I will see you guys in the next one.